Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Necrotic Wake Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide, which is returning in the Dungeon Pool for Season 1 in The War Within. At the start of the dungeon, you're gonna be fighting Blightbacks that explode for a bunch of damage when they die, and they also leave a nasty dub to everybody in your party, so be very careful if you pull a lot of these on top of other packs. You can pick up spears throughout the dungeon, if you throw them at the enemies, they're gonna take increased damage for a few seconds, so make a good use of those and save an interrupt for the drain fluids cast by the corpse harvesters as this turns into a channel that does a ton of damage to its target. The first boss is Blightbone, he's going to target a random player, turn towards them and cast a having wretched frontal. The target might want to pop a defensive and bait it opposite to the direction that you're going to. The hit summons three little adds that you need to slow down CC and cleave down as quickly as possible, and you want to keep them away from your group for several reasons. First, they melee very hard and each subsequent hit is harder than the previous one. If they successfully melee five times in a row, they erupt and put a long dot to everybody in your party, which is technically going to wipe you, as it's not dispellable. And lastly, once they die, they leave a big green puddle behind, which is going to stay there until the end of the fight. So you have to keep moving the boss around, and if you want to beat it, you have to manage the adds correctly the whole time. The trash that follows include sorcerers, interrupt as many of the necrotic bolts as you can, and watch for their shadow well, which drops a big black puddle on the ground, which is going to kill you if you remain in sight. The necromancers are also going to cast necrotic bolts, but they're also going to summon a bunch of skeletons around, but they all die once you kill the necromancer, so you should ignore the adds and focus on the main guy, unless the skeletons are mages, in this case you should spare certain interrupts as they're gonna spam frost bolts, and also they're gonna cast frost bolt volley, which does huge AoE damage to everybody in your group, so it's very important to throw a few interrupts towards them while you're killing the necromancer. In this area, there's also a few animal orbs, if you pick them up, you can use them to do a bunch of damage to your enemies, and it's also going to silence them for a little bit, so it's very useful for big pulls. The bone menders in the area are going to try to cast final bargain that you need to stun. That's a huge heal that also puts a big dot on them, but you still don't want to make it go off, as you don't want to wait for the dot to kill them, then interrupt their bone mans, which is another type of a heal effect. There's also a mini boss here that you want to skip because you have to fight it with a bunch of other casters. But if you do pull it, there's going to be plenty of necrotic boss to interrupt. You have to dispel the boss's dark shroud because it makes him immune to physical attacks and it also starts doing pull sick damage to everyone around it. Its dead burst spawns a lot of balls that explode around it so you have to dodge them. And he's also going to mark a player with his grim fate ability, basically making them a bomb that explodes in a few seconds of course doing AoE damage on top of the player taking even more. This area also includes some skeletal marauders that cleave so make sure to stay behind them. They also cast 8 second absorb shields on themselves, you want to break through those as quickly as possible, as if you succeed you do a ton of damage to themselves, and make sure to interrupt their rasping scream as this is AoE fear. The second boss, Amart, is still going to cast necrotic bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, and also purge the boss once he casts the frenzy to himself. Once he casts Land of the Dead, he's going to summon skeletal adds, the same adds that we've seen with the necromancers. Couple of them are mages, so you have to interrupt them and cleave all of them down as quickly as possible before the boss casts Final Harvest, which is going to make every add that's alive explode for a bunch of damage, potentially wiping you. And in this phase, you also have to dodge the necrotic bread, which is a frontal that the boss circles around. After you kill that boss, you have to go up into the necropolis and kill all the trash there. Some packs are going to have a flesh crafter with a loyal creation. The second one is going to do a big circle that you need to get out of, and the flesh crafter is going to try to cast repair flesh to heal the big mob. Simply interrupt that and be prepared for when they cast throw cleaver. They're gonna mark a player with a red arrow and you have 4 seconds to put the loyal creation between you and the flesh crafter, so it takes the hit and the damage instead, otherwise you're just going to die. If the loyal creation is not there, you can also use your tank to soak the hit instead. The corpse collectors are going to try and cast gore splatter which you need to interrupt, otherwise your whole party is going to take huge AoE damage. 
and they're also going to try and cast the drain fluids which turns into a channel that does a ton of damage and incapacitates the target so make sure to spare interrupt for that as well. Some of the packs also have the big Kyrian stitch works which are going to put a debuff on your tank which is stacking and increases the damage they take. So be very careful when you pull those and try to burst them down quickly so your tank does not get into much trouble. Once you clear all the trash on the floor you start a small gauntlet that starts with two assistants. They have the drain fluids mechanic that you need to interrupt and they're also going to throw cleaver at people which is the same red arrow that you need to aim and somebody needs to soak. If you get that mechanic make sure to aim it to the other assistant so they take the damage but at the very least it should be your tank. They have one new mechanic morbid fixation once they cast that they start chasing someone in your group. Make sure to keep your distance and run away because if they catch you, you die. After you kill them you have to fight two mini bosses, the first one is called Gore Grind. It puts the same damage increase stacking debuff on your tank and it's also going to cast Gut Slice. This is a huge frontal that you need to dodge because it not only does damage but it leaves a nasty bleed on you which is most certainly going to kill you. The second mini boss is Rod Spew, he's going to spit on people the target takes a bunch of damage and leaves a big green puddle on the ground that you need to avoid. He also has an 8 yard aura around him that does taking damage so if you can keep your distance away from him to avoid taking damage. After you kill the mini bosses you start the third boss Stitch Flash who is initially immune to damage he's going to throw green puddles on the ground that you need to dodge and he's going to put bleeds on people that you need to heal through. At the same time big creation is spawned that does sticking damage to everyone in your party while it's alive and occasionally it's going to target somebody in your party and throw a meat hook on them. This is indicated by a big red arrow that you need to aim to the platform where the boss is standing. Once the cast starts move to the side and the hook is going to grip the boss and bring him down removing his immunity to damage. You can focus the boss now but be aware of your positioning as you want to keep the boss between you and the big creation which should still be alive. The reason is it's still going to cast the meat hook and you want the boss to soak that hook as he's going to do the morbid fixation mechanic chasing somebody and killing them if he catches them. However if you land the meat hook on the boss it negates that mechanic. At some point the boss is going to jump back on the platform and become immune to damage again but it also summons another creation so you can repeat the whole phase all over again. Once you kill him you take a portal to the top of the necropolis where the last boss awaits. He's going to cast frozen binds to a player which immobilizes them and needs to be dispelled but before you do that you have to make sure nobody else is standing into the big circle around them as if they do the effect is just going to transfer on them and being immobilized is going to kill you during Comet Storm which is a big swirlies that you need to keep dodging on the ground. He's also going to put a shield on himself that you need to burst through because while the shield is holding it does pulsing and increasing every damage to everybody in the party. And the last mechanic is called Dark Exile. He's going to send a DPS player to a side platform where they have to dodge a bunch of swirlies and kill and interrupt an ad in the next 50 seconds otherwise they're simply going to die. If they succeed they get a buff and they're flown back to the platform but on landing they drop a big ice area denial circle so you want to quickly move to the edge of the platform after you land in order to drop it there. Rinse and repeat until you kill the boss. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Mythic Plus content and dungeon guides for the rest of the dungeons in the war within. I'll see you there, now get out of here.